Just when you thought empirical formulas couldn't possibly get any more fun, we now get to tie them together with percent mass or percent composition by mass, which you guys are all self-proclaimed experts at by now. Uh, remember that when it comes to percent, we're talking about things out of 100%. And even though we've always said we don't want to assume, we know what happens when we assume, dot, 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 uh, in the steps here for calculating empirical formula when we know the percent composition within a compound, which is something we can determine through our, our lab practices, Again, we're looking for trying to identify an unknown substance. If we identify the percent composition of the different elements, we can go through a series of steps to come up with that compound's empirical formula. Step one is actually going against the grain here. We're going to assume a 100 gram sample. And there's that number again. Uh, if we have a sample that is 50% one element, 50% carbon. Well, that's 50 out of 100. If we just said, well, let's call it instead of 50%, 50 grams, let's call it a 100 gram sample instead of 100% sample. Well, then in 100 grams, 50 of it would be that carbon, as long as we stick with the number 100 because we're dealing with percents. Once we have grams, this is great, we know that formulas, chemical formulas, are all about mole ratios. So once we have grams, we can convert from grams to moles, which is what we need in order to determine a formula, whether it's empirical or molecular. Then we divide, step three is divide all the mole numbers by the smallest mole number. Because what you do to one element, the mole number for one element, you have to do to all the others because you have to keep the same ratio. So if you're going to divide, and we do this to get whole numbers. So we're trying to get whole numbers, but also keep the same ratio. And that's the idea here. And so let's go through an example. Take a compound that is 46.2% by mass carbon. It's 53% by mass nitrogen. Now we said that when we do this, since we're dealing with percents, we stick with the number 100. So step one, we're going to start with a 100 gram sample. And that's where we get this. 46.2% would be 46.2 grams. That's our carbon. 53.8% would be 53.8 grams. That represents our nitrogen. Step two is we're going to go through and do our mass mole conversions, our dimensional analysis, which, again, just like percent composition, I know you guys are lights out when it comes to this stuff. You eat it up. So we start with the carbon, it's 46.2 grams of carbon. I make my grid. And we'd have one mole of carbon, this is the GFM, is 12.0111 grams of carbon. We know that grams are going to cancel. We do the multiplication and we get 3.85 moles of carbon. If we do the same thing for nitrogen, right below, we have 53.8 grams of nitrogen. Make our grid. We use the GFM, one mole of nitrogen is 14.0067 grams of nitrogen. We do the algebra, we get 3.84 moles of nitrogen. Now you can see, kind of eyeball these, it's pretty much, you can tell we have a one-to-one -one ratio. But we'll just carry out, again, do the math, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use the space down below. I'm not worried about this here. Uh, I'm going to do this right up here. We're going to divide both of these mole numbers by the lowest. So the, the little rhyme I'll use for you is divide by the lowest mole number 
to get the lowest whole number ratio. And what you end up with is 1.0026 to 1.00000. So it's a 1.0026 to 1, which is basically 1 to 1. What that gives us is a 1 to 1 ratio. And that means that the empirical formula for the compound would be CN. If you wrote in the ones, that's fine. We don't have to worry about them. When the subscript is 1, we can just leave it. C1N1 or CN. This is the empirical formula. It means that the ratio of carbon to nitrogen in this compound is 1 to 1. So on the next page, we'll go through, we'll do, uh, there's five practice problems. I'll walk through the first one with you and leave you to do the next four.